This is a stock photo of an inexpensive Huffy Cranbrook bicycle. I bought one in the spring of 2013 for exercise and rode more than 1,000 miles in the first season. I added a milk crate and toolbox for storage, a 12 volt AA battery pack, a solar panel and alternator for power, a horn and lights, including turn signals and four-way flashers. There is still a video showing details of this project on my YouTube channel. I was reasonably comfortable with the design except for one big problem. The milk crate on the back made it impossible to mount the bike easily. I had to raise my entire foot and leg over the top of the frame to board the bike. I nearly fell on my ass more than once. If I had more foresight, I would have bought a bike with a lower top bar. So when winter came, I carried the Huffy indoors to my workshop and set about redesigning it. And here's the result. This is my new model for 2014. As you can see, my first priority was to move the milk crate to the front. Now I can mount the bike in the normal fashion by swinging my leg over the rear tire. And of course, while I was at it, I made other improvements along the way. That purple water bottle you see on the center post isn't really a water bottle at all. It's my tool kit. I lost my front mounted toolbox when I moved the crate up there. I couldn't move the toolbox to the rear because that would just get in my way like the crate did, so I had to improvise. I was lucky enough to find a tall water bottle with the right diameter that unscrews below the tapered neck. It's quite heavy duty and perfect for tools. I cut the toe from an old cotton sock to wrap around the tools and quiet them down over bumps. My tire pump doesn't fit in the water bottle, but it came with a hardware and bolt pattern necessary to mount it with the water bottle holder. If you look closely, you can see it between my tool bottle and the center post. So where do I keep my water? Right up there on the back side of the crate. It's actually more convenient than fumbling around under the seat for it. My tire driven alternator is still mounted on the bike, but it's not even wired in right now. I don't expect to need it because I upgraded from the AA battery pack to an 8 amp hour lead acid sealed battery and I added a second solar panel to keep up with it. The solar panels are mounted outboard and slightly below the rear cargo rack. We'll see more of them later. So let's take a look at the front of this project. I still have the amber turn signals and four way flashers, a white reflector mounted between them, and I upgraded from a single LED flashlight to two automotive style LED running lights but it gets better from there. My top priority was moving the crate up front for my own safety, but adding a fuse box for connections was second on my list. It's located topside in the rear of the crate, making it easy to access and diagnose circuitry when needed. Here's how it looks from above. The fuse box is really what's called a dry box for storing sensitive items like matches or cell phones when camping, canoeing, or other such activities. Directly below the box is the 8 amp hour sealed battery. Here's the first look inside the fuse box. You can see the gasket in the cover and where it was necessary to drill mounting holes, I used sealer on the screws and bolts. The only exception would be the three holes in the bottom of the box where the wires exit. Rain can't run uphill and the battery blocks direct tire spray. I used a stock terminal strip from the electrical department of my local hardware store. The other materials are standard items from electronic stores or auto parts stores. There's a horn relay to handle the 1.3 amps needed by the horn. A solid state LED flasher unit. Two fuse holders, one for the solar panel circuit and one for everything else. Turn signal indicator lights tucked snugly inside the transparent box so I don't forget to turn the signals off. A toggle switch through the back of the box for disconnecting the voltage meter, and we'll talk more about that later. And finally, a toggle switch through the bottom that disconnects everything except the solar panels. Since taking this picture, I've added a voltage reducer to turn 12 volts into 3 volts. Those 3 volts are available now and will be used in the future for powering smaller items I want to add, such as the transistor radio I already have mounted on the handlebars. My radio presently runs off two AA batteries. Now let's take a look at the rear of this project. I have the usual red reflector and a taillight that can be operated either in flash mode or steady on mode. I use an electronic emergency beacon for the taillight and I offer more information about it in my video titled The Best and Brightest Bicycle LED Taillight Ever Made. This beacon is the first device on my bike to make use of the 3 volt power supply. 
I also have amber turn signals that I assembled myself from inexpensive and readily available parts. See my video titled, Make Your Own LED Lights for Bicycle Turn Signals and Flashers. From this angle we get a much better look at the twin solar panels mounted along each side of the cargo rack. The cargo rack can still hold cargo with this arrangement, but I would be more likely to put it in the crate up front. It would be extremely urgent if I were to block the solar panels with freight. Finally, let's take a look from the driver's seat. I have the mirror on the left, a transistor radio mounted in a smartphone holder, and the lighting controls are in that colorful switch assembly located next to the right handle grip. Also visible are the water bottle, the back of the headlights, and the top of the connection box, including the turn signal indicator lamps showing through the transparent wall. But there's a new item now, that voltmeter on the top right rear of the crate. We can take a closer look at that. Here's the voltmeter I added to keep track of battery status. With this, I can avoid the bad surprise of riding off without enough power. Since this system is primarily solar powered, I don't want to waste any power, so I have a small toggle switch mounted through the back of the fuse box and just to the left of the meter. I can turn the meter on, check battery status, then turn it off again to avoid wasting the 30 or so milliamps the meter consumes. In conclusion, here is the schematic for this solar powered lighting system. The only thing that has changed since I drew this diagram is that my tail light now runs on 3 volts instead of 12 as shown here. This was done in order for me to use a more favorable choice of tail light. If you need to study this schematic, you can pause the video and save or print the screen. I do not have it uploaded anywhere else. Use any information from this video at your own risk. This is merely a representation of my own project and I offer no guarantees of safety or success. As always, this is Clarence. Happy cycling and stay safe out there.